Welcome to DaVinci Resolved. In this week's tutorial, we're going to be looking at one of the staples of VFX, digital makeup. With this technique, we're able to accomplish a variety of things such as aging an actor, adding tattoos, changing facial features, or like in our case today, adding some cuts and bruises. We'll accomplish this by using the planar tracker, some color correction, and finish it all off by removing the tracking markers from the actor's face. Let's get started and jump straight into Resolve. So just like before, I've gone ahead and loaded our footage into Resolve already. So we're going to click on that and then click on the Fusion tab. Let's click on our footage and then hit Control Spacebar and start typing PLAN for Planar Tracker. Add that node in and hit 2 on the keyboard to load that into our viewer. Now the first thing you'll probably notice is it doesn't look like that the Planar Tracker has actually done anything. That's because we need to define a shape and tell Fusion where we want it to track. The planar tracker, like its name suggests, is perfect for tracking planes or flat surfaces. In our case, this would be the side of my face. Of course, in reality, no one's face is perfectly flat. But in this case, it's flat enough along with some other key features such as the hairline for Fusion to be able to track it with no problem. So let's start drawing our shape. So I'm going to define just a general area around here that's roughly all on the same plane that hopefully Fusion will be able to track nicely for us. I'm going to include these tracking markers and I'm even going to include a couple of areas where my mouse moves. Now if we were tracking a plane normally we wouldn't want to do this because we want the track to be solid but in this case where we're tracking an organic subject uh, I'm going to want the scar tissue or wound or whatever it is we track on to stretch and squash naturally with the movement of my skin. Once we've defined our shape, we can go over to the properties toolbar here. And the first thing we need to do is set a reference frame. Now, the reference frame is a frame that Fusion is going to use at every stage to compare other frames to, to see exactly how this plane has moved. So I'm going to use this frame. It's nice and sharp. It's got a lot of detail in it. We don't want to set a reference frame that's got heavy motion blur or it has fuzzy details but let's set this frame. The next thing we want to do is change our tracker type to hybrid point area. We can leave the motion type to perspective so we can grab the uh, full spectrum of movement. The output we can leave at background and for now I'm going to change the track channel to red because it's got lots of nice contrast in it but we may change this as the track goes on. Just before we continue you'll notice that I have slightly altered the shape of my track. I've made it quite bigger and I've included areas of high contrast even including part of the wall with these edges because it will still track everything within these edges here like the edges of my hair which are really good for tracking. With the planar tracker you want the shape to be as big as possible to capture the most amount of information. So now I've got the shape that I need and I've got it set to the reference frame I can click track to start and let's watch and see what happens. And as you can see, there's plenty of information there for the planar tracker to grab onto. You'll notice that about halfway here, it's failed. This happens from time to time, and I've found that the best way to fix it is to go to the last successful frame, for example here, and then just use this button here, Step Tracker to Previous Frame, to nudge the tracker back. And look at that, now it's sticking. And now we'll click Track to Start again. Just checking that it gets... OK, it's gone off again, so same trick as before nudge it back and then track to start. Let's scrub through that and yeah it looks like we've got a pretty solid track there so let's do the same now tracking forward. So it's track to end. You can see it's stretching here nicely which is going to stretch the graphic nicely with my mouth and that looks to be pretty solid. So now our tracks done we want to import our graphic. So I'm going to take this scar image that I got here and it has no transparency data currently so I'm going to add a Luma Kia just to key out the bright areas. If we hit A on our keyboard we can see the alpha channel as well which is useful because it lets us know what's being keyed. I'm going to invert that. Everything in white will be kept and all the black will be transparent. I'm going to 
to blur this luma key a bit looks good and then we want to get rid of this little scratch here so i'm going to add a spline and draw around the area that we don't want to keep and then i'm going to plug that directly into the garbage mat input on our luma here and you'll see that we have our scar so now we can plug this directly into our planar tracker hit two to bring that back into the viewer and then we want to set our operation mode from track to corner pin and you'll be presented with something that looks like this a strange rectangle now this is simply a representation of the plane that we've tracked now currently fusion doesn't know where in our scene this plane sits it has no 3d information it's all 2d so we need to line this plane up so let's grab these corners and we just want to line up the perspective of where we would expect our track to be one tip is not to line up this plane where you want the graphic to go you want to line it up roughly to match where the track actually has the data so if we switch back to our track we can see it's got the hair it's got the chin we want it to line up roughly around there so let's go back to our corner pin and just move that into place the more accurate this is the more accurate that final track is going to look so once you're happy with your track and corner pin positioning we can start moving our asset around i'm going to do that by adding a transform node after the luma here but before the planar tracker it's important that we don't do it after the planar tracker or it will wreck our track but now we've got that transform node in we have complete independent control over where our graphic goes so let's add a bit of scale to this and one nice thing about the planar tracker is once you set it to corner pin it essentially turns it into a merge node so with that you have the apply mode over here which you can change to something like soft light and it'll blend in nicely with our skin we can also control the opacity by dragging the gain slider. Let's have a look. Awesome, that's nicely sticking to the face and it's also getting a bit of that squash and stretch from where the mouth moves. So that's blending in really nicely. So now we've tracked the, the uh, cheek and we've got our asset onto there. I'd like to track the forehead. So I'm gonna add a planar tracker again I'm going to keep it separate from the other nodes for now. And I'm going to find a decent reference frame. So frame where there's not too much going on. It's a good neutral pose and there's little to no motion blur to confuse things. And I'm just going to draw a rough shape around here. And I'm going to set that as a reference frame. Change our tracker to hybrid leave all the other settings as default and track forward it's our first bit tracked and then I'm going to do the same but track backwards okay it's getting a little bit stuck here so what I might do is just try changing the track channel so I can change it from luma to red because the red channel has a lot of contrast in it and sometimes by changing the channel it just gives fusion something different to look at in this case that has gone catastrophically wrong so what I might do instead is let's go to point let's give it some more information to work with with these eyebrows and maybe give it some more in the head area as well the great thing about planar tracking is fusion doesn't actually care what's in this shape it can move around as much as you like the final track data will be the same as long as everything you track is on the same plane so let's try tracking backwards again mm, nope that's being thrown off so we're gonna again looks like it's not liking some of the hair on the left there you can tell by the little red dots so i'm going to take these points here and pull them in and we'll do another track back okay that time seems to be doing better but it's done our usual thing where it sort of stops mid track so i'm going to take it back here nudge it back a couple of frames and then track to the start again okay that's not looking too bad let's plug our graphic in now and uh, see what it looks like so i've created a assets folder here just to keep myself organized and i've got this gray's texture that i'm going to use now i'm going to do a tiny bit of prep work on this again by creating a spline Drawing around our shape roughly 
and then plugging this polygon into our media. And now we have a little bit more control with our soft edge and our border width. We can shrink it down a bit. Let's plug that into our planar tracker and set the operation mode to corner pin, just like before. And then we're gonna match up roughly with our track, the perspective points here. And let's play that through. Cool, that's not looking bad at all. So now we're happy with our track. We do exactly the same as before and we add a transform node in before our planar track, which will allow us to play around with the uh, asset, however we like. So let's put it about here, uh, scale it up a bit. Okay, and then we can grab our planar tracker and change the corner pin apply mode to soft light. And again, that will just blend it in nicely for us. Turn the gain down a little bit. Okay, great. Now we want to put our two graphics together. So let's grab our first one here. And for the sake of keeping things neat and tidy so that we know exactly what we're doing, I'm gonna add an underlay like we did in our last video. And we'll call this one, we'll alt click this, hit F2 and call this one scar. And we'll do the same here, underlay, alt click and we'll call this one graze. Let's click our planar tracker and in, under merge mode, instead of foreground over background, we want to set it to foreground only. And then we'll take our apply mode and we'll set that to normal. And we'll do the same for our grays. Just gonna resize this box here. We'll do the same for our grays. We'll have foreground only and we'll set the apply mode to normal because we're not actually gonna be using these planar trackers uh, this way in this case what I'll do is I'll merge the media node still needs to be piped into our planar trackers but then I'm going to merge the planar tracker over the media so that we now have this merge node which is merging over our scar so I'm going to set the um, apply mode to soft light so we're getting basically the same effect let's merge this one over again doing the same with the greys and we'll set the apply mode to soft light. And then we can turn the gain down a little bit just to blend that in better. And now we have two injuries in the one shot. So before I go over some final tips for color correcting these assets, we need to get rid of these tracking markers that are on the face. And this is a really old piece of footage where I was actually doing a full 3D head replacement. So I've put more tracking markers than we actually need for this example. So I'm not gonna remove all of them, but I'll remove the majority of them just to give you an idea and show you the principles in removing tracking markers on footage like this. The first thing we want to do is create a blur node. And then pipe our footage into this two on the keyboard and you'll see that we have now control over blurring that original clip. Now if we create a um, ellipse mask and we just drag that around one of these tracking markers like so and then click on our blur what you'll notice is as we increase the blur that tracking marker will literally just disappear. So that's the idea behind this um, method. We're trying to blur out the tracking markers that are on the face and then we need that to track along with the footage. Now fortunately for us we already have all the tracking data we need in our planar trackers. So the question is how do we take this data and apply it to our tracking masks? Well I'm going to show you now. So starting with the forehead let's click on the planar tracker and I'm going to set the mode back to track just temporarily and click on this button here create planar transform. 
and that will create a new node and in this node you'll see all these keyframes and these are the tracking information from our planar tracker so we can set this back to corner pin now okay next we want to create a background node background and then if we hit control C control V it will automatically merge this background over the pasted background now in our first node we want to create a transparent texture so let's make the alpha completely transparent and then in our second node on top of that we want a completely black background now we want to plug this newly created um, merge into our planar transform and then we plug that into the mask node of our blur so if we bring that up now and turn up our blur you'll see that this big black background is tracking along with our head so you'll be able to see it a bit better if we go here but there you go you can see that's moving around with the planar track from before finally let's turn our blur down and we want to plug in our masks for our tracking spots into this mask map of the the uh, merge node so let's click an ellipse mask and we'll drag that over one of these dots like that and then if we pipe that into the mask node of our merge move that there we'll see that this will now be tracking along exactly with the planar data so now if we turn our blur back on you'll see it will blur out our tracking marker and if we hit play it tracks along pretty nicely now you need to play around with a few things because uh, sometimes you may need to just animate the center position of this just to help it along because the track doesn't always get it perfect but if you're lucky you have to do a lot less work than just keyframing all these manually. And in this case, I'm gonna turn the blur up a little bit and then I'm gonna take the ellipse and I'm gonna soften out the edge just to blend it in better. Still a bit of a circle on my head there, so let's try softening this edge some more. How's that look? Brilliant. Okay, so if you wanna um, get rid of the rest of these tracking markers on the same plane what you do is hit control C control V and move the uh, mask same again control C control V on this node control C control V move that over to somewhere else and just cover up all the points where there's a tracking marker control C control V and let's hit play and for the most part, that's looking pretty good. I mean, it could do with a little bit of tidy up work because here we're at, perhaps it's a bit too blurred. So we could take this mask here and make it a little bit smaller. Maybe soften the edge out a bit more. Just play around till you get it looking right. It's a little bit harder near the hairline because it's darker and it, that blur is, but All in all, that's very nearly there. So I'm not gonna show you the entire cleanup process because it would just take too long for the video, but the principle is exactly the same. And I'll just show you quickly with the cheek. So click on our planar tracker data here for the scar, switch the mode to track and click on create planar transform, which will create this node containing all our transform data. Let's turn the planar tracker back to uh, corner pin and then we're going to copy this blur here and then we're going to take our backgrounds I just grouped these together um, I grouped the forehead masks and I grouped the backgrounds just to keep things neat and tidy in the flow I'm going to copy that and paste that put that into our planar transform and then 
that into our blur. And now you'll see that the background looks like it's going mental, but you'll see in a minute it's just doing what we want it to. So let's go to blur, turn our blur down, and then into this we want to plug an ellipse and place that on the one of the markers. And now if we go back to our blur and turn it up until that disappears, hit play, you'll see that that marker is gone. So let's do the same with the other three dots. So I'm going to just go Control C, Control V to copy and paste it, move it along. And, and con Control V. And as you can see, in about 10 seconds, we've cleaned up four markers on the side of the face. It's just so quick, this method. Now there are other ways of doing it. You may want to use the, the clone paint tool, which is uh, similar to using the clone stamp in Photoshop and painting, painting on a clone patch of the face. But I found that this method just works really well and really quick. And that brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thanks very much for watching and sticking with it. I really hope it was useful to you. If you're not already subscribed and would like to see more, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed it and could leave a like, I'd really appreciate that too. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, things you'd like to know how are done in Resolve, please leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks and see you next time.